The term Tesla beater and Tesla killer is often banded around in the automotive world, and I, for one, don't really like it, as it implies Tesla isn't somehow a legitimate automaker, and it most certainly is. Lately, I've noted more and more electric car fans become vehemently dismissive of so-called legacy automakers and their own plug-in car plans, none perhaps as much as Audi, Porsche and Volkswagen. Yet, while the trio of companies may seem small fry right now, I believe they represent the biggest competitive threat to Tesla to date. And no, that doesn't make them Tesla killers. It makes them companies that will finally provide some serious competition for the legendary electric car brand in the plug-in car marketplace. What's more, it makes the Volkswagen Group a company that everyone in the plug-in space needs to take very seriously and not dismiss, because if you do, it might be at your peril. But to see why, I think it's time for a little quick history lesson. Volkswagen was founded at the height of Nazi Germany, and its first car, the Type 1, was designed by Ferdinand Porsche's consulting firm. It was bankrolled by the German government and supported by Adolf Hitler. Post-war, the company and the Type 1, which most people now know as the original Volkswagen Beetle, was deemed unattractive and lacking in technical merits by British automakers, while Ford Motor Company said that it wasn't, quote, worth a damn. Nobody wanted it or the car, and the company was eventually handed back to state ownership of the German government. But since then, in its early days, Volkswagen AG, as it became known in the early 60s when the German government floated its shares in the company on the stock market, has undergone some pretty big changes. It managed to change people's attitudes towards the brand and, in fact, enjoyed a massive spike of popularity in the 60s and 70s as people fell in love with the Beetle, the iconic microbus, and towards the end of the 70s, the Volkswagen Golf, or Rabbit. Up until 2015, a Volkswagen AG, which in the interim years had acquired a number of other automotive brands, including Audi, Skoda, Seat, Bentley, Bugatti, Lamborghini and Porsche, in addition, of course, to the original Volkswagen brand, enjoyed a largely positive reputation. But then, of course, in 2015, it and some of its other brands were discovered designing and using software in certain diesel-engined vehicles designed specifically to cheat in emissions tests, complying with regulations when on a test rig, but then emitting many, many times legal NOx levels when actually on the road. It was criminal activity, plain and simple, and many of its executives and some of its top engineers rightly ended up facing expulsion from the company, fines, and in some cases, prison time. Since then, Volkswagen AG has worked hard to rebrand itself as a cleaner, more caring company. In addition to billions of euros of fines worldwide, it has been forced to invest in the promotion of electric vehicles and fund the Electrify America charging network in the US. And Volkswagen, Audi and Porsche, as well as some of the other brands, have gone from being sceptical and in some cases downright dismissive of electric vehicles to promising us a whole new slew of plug-in cars. The Audi e-tron, e-tron Sportback, Q4 e-tron and e-tron GT are all promised to enter production in the next few years. The first ground-up Volkswagen brand electric vehicle, the Volkswagen ID.2, supposedly promises a range in excess of 200 miles, rear-wheel drivetrain, super-fast charging, and an MSRP in the mid-20 to 30,000 euro price point, and will be the first of more than 25 new models that Volkswagen says will be built on a brand new vehicle platform, the MEB Electrification Toolkit, which has been designed exclusively for electric vehicles. And then, of course, there's Porsche, which is readying its Taycan sports sedan for market, complete with next-generation rapid charging technology, and has also got plans to bring the Cross Turismo concept to market shortly after, as well as committing to making the next-generation Porsche Macan an electric-only model. Hardened electric car fans have poured scorn and disbelief on the direction of these Volkswagen AG brands, sometimes quite rightly so. They've questioned where each brand will get its battery packs or questioned how they will compete against the market leader that is Tesla. And I even joined in making jokes about how Volkswagen and its sibling companies need to stop showing us concept cars and actually start producing cars we can buy. So why then am I saying that the Volkswagen Group is the biggest competitive threat to Tesla? Simply put, 
its size, market share, and proven ability to reinvent itself. Let's start with size. While Tesla is growing rapidly, it's still a relatively small automaker. Sure, it's dominating many plug-in marketplaces around the world, but it's still small when compared to the behemoth that is the Volkswagen Group. In fact, the Volkswagen Group is one of the world's largest automotive manufacturers, alongside Toyota and the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance. In 2017, it made 10.8 million vehicles. It made nearly $14 billion in profits, and despite the Dieselgate scandal still causing it to pay in some pretty hefty fines, those fines did very little to stem its growth in revenue. OK, I hear you say, why is Volkswagen so special? It cheated in emissions tests, it's got skeletons in its closet, and Tesla's managed all of these successes without any of Volkswagen's scandals. Tesla is a trailblazer. It's done fantastic things that many people thought were completely impossible. It's changed the attitude to electric cars worldwide, and it's changed what we expect of our cars. But while it's done all of that over 15 years and absolutely trounced the competition who weren't interested in competing, there's one thing it doesn't have right now, a whole lot of money. Of course, it has the massive gigafactories, and it's the only automaker producing such large levels of batteries for its own vehicles. That helps insulate Tesla from price fluctuations for battery packs, and it also helps it lower its overheads. But Volkswagen has a manufacturing capacity around the world that is several orders of magnitude larger than Tesla. Its profits are massively larger, and it spent more than 91 billion US dollars to shift its brands away from internal combustion engine technology and towards electric vehicles. If you were wondering, that's three times the amount of money it's spent in fines related to Dieselgate. And while Volkswagen 2 has been forced to tighten the metaphorical belt in order to ensure it has cash on hand to make this transition, it will be able to ramp up far more quickly than Tesla did simply by having a lot more money to throw at the problem. And it already has two fully electric vehicle platforms that it's using to underpin the next decade or more of its electric vehicles. So if size and money are the two biggest things I'm using here to illustrate why Volkswagen and its sister companies need to be taken seriously, why shouldn't we be looking to Toyota or Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, at least when it comes to Tesla competition? Toyota right now isn't committed to electric vehicles. Yes, it's developing them quietly, but it's pretty much bet the whole house on hydrogen fuel cell technology. And right now it's got plenty of backing in Japan to ensure it continues along that path. And Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, well, while the alliance is big and it has a big investment already in electric vehicle technology, it doesn't do a whole lot in terms of premium brands. In fact, there's only one premium brand in the whole three companies, Infinity. And while Infinity has made some noises about going electric, it's nowhere near as pronounced as either Porsche's or Audi's commitments. These two brands, meanwhile, are already bringing models to market that will come into the premium and luxury marketplace at price points that will compete directly against Tesla. Yes, Tesla has its over-the-air software update and its own real-life Iron Man, and that goes a long way to giving the company the edge. And it's got autopilot and the engineering flexibility, something that really helped it in its early days. But the one thing it doesn't yet have is financial flexibility, and that's something Volkswagen is all too happy to use to ensure that it has the supplies it needs to issue a full bore attack on the company that started the EV revolution. Ignore it at your peril. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or you didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single episode. And if you want to support the show, there are three ways you can do that in the show notes below. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.